Greetings, everyone. Your friendly neighborhood illegal alien here. Today, I want to talk about a comic that I enjoyed when I was a little younger, and I was in, I want to say, yeah, I was in college at this time, working at um, a couple stores, and I actually was working at the comic book store at this time, I think. Um, the comic that I want to talk about today is called Roach Mill. Yes, Roach Mill. The Exterminator for Hire. It was created by Tom McLeany and Rich Heaton. It was originally published by Blackthorn Publishing, and then later it was picked up by Dark Horse Comics, and especially Dark, if, those, if you remember Dark Horse Presents, had some issues of um, Roach Mill in it. it was, the book was published around from between 1986 to 1990. Um, basic gist of the comic, the comic was set in the 30th century in New York City. Aliens have now come to Earth. And would you believe it? These aliens started causing all these types of social problems. Kind of an interesting twist there, huh? So, the United States created an act, actually the Earth created an act called the Extermination Act. This allowed anybody with a gun to kill any alien on any related social alien issues. This eventually got extended into the creation of licensed exterminators because now they were also able to kill humans. So you would hire an exterminator to take a person out. Now the main character in all this was Roach Mill. He was a Clint Eastwood-looking human-cockroach hybrid exterminator. He had um, the Clint Eastwood looking on him, and then he had these two cockroach-looking arms that he could use as well. He's probably the most infamous exterminator in all the, the 30th century. Um, everybody knew who he was. Everybody feared him to a point. Um, so... The basic concept of the first story arc was that Roachman was being framed for murder. And he goes on trial. And, you know, he lots of things happen. And during the trial, he finds out that the jury's being bribed to find a guilty plea on him so he can be thrown into pri the prison forever. Well... How, he, how Roach Mill gains his freedom, he basically goes and escapes from prison and threatens each one of the jury to make sure they find that he's innocent. And he even went after the judge, if I, if I remember correctly. So, he gets off, and the story the series takes on after that. Um, what I really liked about it was the art style. The... Um, it was a black and white comic. The art was, you know, just very cool. I mean, it went from this realistic look to sometimes this very cartoony look. Even the humor in the writing went that way. I mean, McLeany would put in the background images, like, just these little Easter eggs of humor that you could see in the back of the pages, referencing other comics and just things going on in the normal day and every life. Um, it, would, it did have a little bit of the social commentary of the time, um, but it also, I think, could be relevant for today. I think it might be something interesting to say, hey, let's, let's, let's hit up uh, Dark Horse's Twitter and say, bring back Roach Mill. I mean, I, I'll definitely campaign for it. I, I think it would, would be perfect for now. I mean, we're all, a lot of you have been talking about a conservative style comic book. I mean, Roach Mill, I think, fit that, that mold. At the time, it was a very dirty, hairy, is like uh, comic. I mean, he was he was a killer. I mean, you know, he didn't care. He was getting paid to kill people and exterminate people, exterminate people. Um, later on in the Dark Horse era, era it, it did get a little campy. They had a character, another exterminator, who was the bane of Roach Mill's existence, named Zhu Lu. And he was a little campier, and he was a little cartoon. Reminded me very of Slapstick slash Ambush Bug at the time. So I think that's what they were going for. Um, 
they actually had a funny funny instance in the Dark Horse where Zulu's hired to go kill the, I think, editor or something at Dark Horse Comics because every time Zulu shows up in in the um, comic books, um, the Sam Roachmill sales drop. So it, it, they did a, a, a cute little storyline in that. I think that was actually in the dark one of the Dark Horse Presents, possibly. Um, when I kind of looked back at it, I said, you know, this probably helped push some of my political leanings nowadays in just reading comics like this, that, that, that you know, and, and enjoying them. Um, as far as for me, I really like the art style. I, I mean, I was an art major. It, this, the art style was dead on for me. I really loved it. Um, the black and white, the detail in the art was, was great. It, it, at times it had a very Miller look to it, and then other times it didn't. Miller, Miller's was always a little more stylized. Roachmill had some of that black negative space playing going on, which looked, worked really well for it. Um, again, this is a comic that I really enjoyed. I think you guys all might enjoy it. You can probably go look it up um, online. You can probably find the trade trade paperback they made. They made two trade paperbacks um, for Roach Mill through Dark Horse. Um, definitely go look it up. I, I recommend it. As you see, some of the images from on the screen here. Um, let, let's you know, go go enjoy it. Go go take a look. Um, I'd like to thank you all for listening again. Um, give me any suggestions on what you want, would like me to, to talk about, what you would like to hear, what would you like to do. Um, I'm going to try to focus on older, on my, my loves in comics, and maybe something, if you give me a suggestion, I might, hey, I might have liked that same comic book too, and I can talk about it. Um, I'm going to give you the same old boring stuff that you always hear. Hit the subscribe button, but hey, if you don't hit the like button or the subscribe button, then the aliens are coming to abduct you, just so you know. Talk to you later. Bye.